Autumn is my favorite season here at the Pacific Northwest. Last year, I did a video talking about painting different autumn trees. I have learned a lot since then, and I want to share what I've learned with you. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. I hope you're having a wonderful Thanksgiving week. So I thought this time I will talk more about the autumn scenery as a whole. So. I love autumn, obviously with the color it offers, especially when the sun hits the yellow and orange leaves, the place filled with this wonderful glow that can really bring warmth to my heart. That being said, there are a few things that you need to pay attention to when it comes to painting an autumn scenery. These are something that I mess up from time to time as well. Number one. Don't confuse color with value. This is the most common mistake students make, especially on a sunny autumn day when you look at a tree with yellow and red leaves that are lit by the sun. It can get so bright and vivid you would think that they are bright values. However, they are actually closer to the middle value. If you switch the scenery to black and white, you can clearly see that they are not as light as you think. This is why the value studies are important, because it helps you to see the proper value. Otherwise, the warm, bright colors will not be as rich as it should be in your painting. Number two, simplify the details. This goes without saying, especially when you are trying to paint a loose painting. This can be especially difficult because it is very difficult to disregard the beautiful details in nature. That being said, the big shapes are still the most important thing because that's what makes your painting read. So it's important to focus on the shape and capture the essence of the scenery rather than try to copy all the details. Number three, pick a paintable subject. Where I live, there are beauties everywhere I go because it's filled with trees and golden brown colors and it can be overwhelming. So of course, you want to pick a subject that speaks to you, but you still need to keep in mind that you are going to paint the scenery. You need to evaluate if the scenery is paintable. If it's beautiful, but it doesn't have any strong paintable shapes, it is perfectly fine to keep it as a photograph or just take it in and enjoy it with your own eyes. Okay, so I'm going to paint this photo that I took near where I live. I really like the sense of the lighting and scale of this scenery, so I decided to paint it. Now, I did change a few things here and there to make it more interesting for painting, so I'm mostly going to reference from my edited photo here. Before we start though, if you like my content, be sure to like and subscribe, hit the bell icon so you won't miss my next video. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the value study. So I'm also gonna go over the drawing part. That being said, the drawing is actually quite simple because there's not a lot of structures in this scenery. The big major shape is definitely the tree and the rose. So if you kind of squint your eyes, aside from the foreground tree that I added, the major shape is the sky and everything else. So I take a little bit of time to draw the car and I have the car roughly follow the perspective. But the perspective for this specific scenery is not that heavy. You just need to sort of hint that. And if it looks somewhat natural, then it is good. Like I said, one of the things that really caught my eyes in this scenery is the scale. So if you look at the car and the huge trees on the left, that really shows the sense of scale of this scenery. And I really like that. So I'm starting the first wash of my value study, which is the middle value. And here's the scene that I was talking about. As bright and beautiful as those yellow leaves are on the left, they're more or less part of the middle value. And you can kind of tell if you squint your eyes a little bit that the tree definitely jumps out in front of the bright blue sky. So that's what I'm talking about here. Just because the leaves are lit by the sun doesn't mean that they are part of the light value. So I'm connecting all the trees into one single shape and I connect that to the car and also the figures and the shadow that cast by the figures and also the foreground shadow that is not connected with anything else but I don't really find a problem with that. So now we got 
this major shape going on the sky and tree cars and everything else. So here is our first watch of the value study. And like before, I'm going to take that first wash of a value study and start my first two wash of my color painting. So I already did a drawing part, so I'm not going to show you the drawing part again. Again, very simple drawing. I just make it a little bit tighter because this paper is a little bit bigger and that's about it. So I am pre-mixing some of the color that I need, obviously the blue sky, the yellow warm leaves, and some of the bright side of the road. So this is going to be the first wash. So again, the first wash is the white part of the value study. So I'm starting off with the sky wash. And before that's dry, I start to paint in some bright yellow color for the light of the tree. Now, most of the tree are going to be in the middle value, but I still like to paint some color of the light, which is what the first wash is about. It's just the color of the light and atmosphere. You don't really need to start to define what you are painting. I'm just putting down the colors. So the background trees got some kind of warm brownish color in the distance, those dry leaves and stuff. So I just paint those in. And I also start to paint some colors for the car in as well. So the white car, I'm actually not planning to leave it white just because there's actually still a little bit of the reflection of the environment, the sky and the tree. And I'm just finishing up the wash with a warm color. So this is the first wash. And even though you can starting to tell a little bit of value, if you squint your eyes, there still kind of blending to each other. So that's the first wash, which is just the white of the paper. Now, if we look at the value study, this is the part that we're starting to paint the second wash, which is the middle value. So I start to mix a little bit thicker mixtures for the second wash, and I start with the background. And as you can see, that is a good middle value, and I connect that with some other shapes and color. The trick is to paint and connect and merge with different colors. And that's the tricky part of this second wash. You want it to have a continuous shape, connect as much shape as possible, and try to separate things by just using the color. This is going to create a lot of good lost and found edges to make your painting very interesting. So even though people will just read the big shape, within that shape, they can start to separate things a little bit just because of the colors. So from the background, this sort of dirt orange color connect to the darker trees, which is a little bit more brownish green. And I also come down and connect to the red card. So the red car is all in the middle value. So I just make somewhat of a, a cool red, a little bit darker red for it. I learned this process mostly from Andy Evenson. He is an artist that I really admire and I've been to his workshop. I'm also taking his online workshop right now. So I learned a lot from him. So I'm definitely sharing with you what I learned so far as well. So now I connect the middle ground trees into the left and I start to make some a little bit darker middle value orange and yellow color. I try to skip a little bit to leave out a little bit of the background sky. And here's the part that you want to simplify. There's thousands of leaves on that tree. But if you try to paint every single one of them, it's going to be madness and it's going to get repetitive very, very soon. So try to simplify what you see into one big shape. And when I paint the dark shape, I can add a little bit more detail and make it look just a little bit more lush. And you can also see that at the top of the tree, the silhouette part, I give it just a little bit of detail. and have some even kind of floating leaves. Those are part of the visual language that I'm trying to convey that this is a tree with a lot of leaves. And here's the finished first two wash of the painting. Now back to value study. I actually finished the value study in one go, but I just want to make it 
look like is tandem in the editing so that you can see it side by side a little bit better so my second watch of the value study is the dark value so we have our light value which is the white of the paper the middle value which is the first watch we paint now the second watch is the dark value so i start to paint some darker part of the tree the dark side of the car the wheel the front grille and the windshield things like that and those can be a little bit separated but if you can try to connect them as well so i connect the background tree that's a little bit darker to the dark of the tree on the left and I also try to connect with the car in the background and also very importantly I try to connect the dark shape to the right side the right side tree are definitely darker and this is a good time to start paint out those delicate branches details some more leaves and stuff and here I find the light part of the road a little bit too light. Feels like it's bright like the sky. Now in the reference image, they are pretty similar, but I feel like it's a little bit too much contrast in the foreground that can look a little bit distracting. So I do a glaze on it and paint the foreground trees that kind of frames the whole picture. Also create a little bit sense of balance. So I try to play with the scratching. So there is thicker paint. When it's almost dry, you can kind of scratch out some highlights for the tree trunk and branches. So here is the finished value study. So now back to our color version. Now, because this is editing, so it didn't show that I was actually continue my painting before the second wash is dry which means that the tree on the left is not completely dry yet. it's still a little bit damp so if I mix a thicker mixture I can do some wet on wet on it and get some nice soft edges so it got a little bit of softer transition from the middle value to the dark value and also have a little bit more color variation so you can see I just try to paint a little bit of the dark side on the tree and it start to take form you start to feel like the tree is a three-dimensional object rather than a two-dimensional flat face and I also start to just adding some dark on the bottom of the tree tree is not an easy thing I find myself always kind of struggle with trees whenever there is a large amount of trees in a scenery in a painting it's very easy for me to start to paint too much into it and since the shape is so big it's very easy to make it look sort of dead so it's important that you try to simplify that and try to paint the riches into the shape instead of trying to paint all those little details try to separate them merge the shape and have a little bit of wet onto wet play either with the color and some values can spray a little bit of water just to give it a little bit of textures but overall try to keep it nice and clean and simple so that it's not going to look too heavy it's not going to look too stiff so connect that to the pine trees on the background they are mostly in the dark but i do leave out a little bit of the light on the top and then the tree on the right which is also very dark I'm trying to paint those in I use a smaller brush to paint out some of the branches and small leaves Again, when you're painting leaves, try not to repeat your marks. Try not to repeat your brush strokes. Try to have a little bit more variation with your brush stroke as well. If you start to paint repetitive marks, that's when the painting start to look boring. That's when the painting start to look a little bit dead. So try to make your brush stroke very lively. Paint in different direction, different pressure, different thick and thin. And now I scratch out some of the tree trunk and the branches in the background. It's very subtle. You can see a little bit of detail there. But if you look at the photo, it's actually the same thing. It's not actually white. It's, it's still in the dark. Just that the tree trunk, tree branches, the value is a slightly lighter than the leaves. 
So if you can kind of scratch out a little bit of that, that's great. So I'm painting the figure. I decided to make the figure front facing just because it looks a little bit better. If you have two side facing character, it can look a little bit stiff. So I start to fill in some dark details for the cars in the back and start to paint a darker shade for the red car. And again, watch your brush stroke. I see students when they paint card from time to time, they have a lot of squeaky strokes and stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. It is your painting. But when you are painting man-made structure like a car or a building, try to make your brush stroke just a little bit stiffer, just a little bit more straight so that the viewer can see the surface quality differences just by different brush stroke that you use. The front car as well start to fill in some details of the front grille the windshield side view mirrors and things like that so it's getting closer to our original vision with the value study on the left i'd also like to paint a little bit of a reflection colors on the white car hood those are very interesting little details that i can manage to put in painting the figure try to keep the figure simple and as you can see our painting is rapidly taking shapes i haven't painted the foreground shadow yet but because it's not connected i am leaving that for later so now i'm starting to do that so i make some darker kind of cool color and paint that shadow in the foreground and all of a sudden you start to feel the depths a lot better. You have something in the foreground, like a huge shadow. And when you go back into the distance, you start to see smaller shadows casting from the cars and the figures and the trees and so on. So I'm just added a little bit of the orange color in the shadow to suggest there's some falling leaves on the road. Now onto the foreground trees on the top. So again, some delicate shapes, but keep the value to dark value. So now when that is in, that says a good balance between that and the tree on the left and all the visual interest of the car of the figure on the left. And here is the finished painting side by side with the value study. I hope you enjoy this painting and demo. I hope you enjoy this video. Oftentimes the simple scenery is actually harder to paint because it's very easy to start painting repetitive marks. So know how to simplify and focus on the big shape is still very important. That's it for today's video. And by the way, the full unedited demo for this painting is available for students who enrolled in the Watercolor Essential course for free. So if you already got the course, be sure to check out the bonus page. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. This is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.